What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and it is the best part of any season, regardless if the Jaguars are winning games or losing football games. It is officially Tennessee Titans hate week. Now, we hate the Tennessee Titans year-round. It's always tuck the fightins, no matter what, but every time that they get on the gridiron, the whole week feels a little bit more personal. The Jags are 1-0. The Titans are 1-0. Their stories are both a little bit different heading into this game, and the Jaguars need to do some things right in order to become 2-0 and and to shock a lot of people that thought they were tanking. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Tennessee Titans week number two preview. Now, before I start this video, I want to give a big shout out to Ben the Scientist, who made a really good post in my community post where I posted, what are your guys' keys to victory this week against Tennessee? And he said that the young kids need to play like veterans. They did last week. Let's see if they can do it again. And I think that's going to be a constant thing all season long. I mean, you've got a lot of second year guys and a lot of rookies on this team that are going to have to play like veterans all season long and I mean I think that's why myself included you know looked at this team like a rebuilding team you know they're building a team for the future they're building you know a team that could win three four years down the road but there are some guys on this team despite the youth despite the age that are going to help the Jaguars win right now and they have built a culture in Jacksonville I think that's kind of what they're building I think that's kind of what you know, you gotta like being a Jags fan right now. And what you gotta like about the Jacksonville Jaguars, just in general, is this culture that they're building right now. I mean, I know it was just week one, but I mean, if they can build on this and they can keep winning games and they can keep, you know, improving week by week, then this is gonna be a culture shift and a culture change in Jacksonville. You know, from guys that were big personalities. Guys that, you know, made humongous plays all the time to, you know, more of guys that, you know, just put their head down, get the job done, and win games. Not to say Gardner Minshew isn't a big personality, because obviously he is. I mean, the mustache, the jorts, all of that, you know, that comes with Gardner Minshew. But he also is a grinder. This man loves the game of football. If there's one thing that he loves more than jorts, it's football. And this man is going to work hard and make sure that he can win you football games. And I think there's a lot of young guys on this team that have that same mentality. You look at a guy on the defensive side of the ball that I think is going to be, you know, a leader for years to come. And a guy that, you know, really seems like he wants to be in Duval County for a long time. And that's Josh Allen. Josh Allen, from everything, top to bottom, looks like a defensive leader. Looks like a captain. Looks like a guy that these Jaguars can count on in the long term and looks like, you know, he's going to be a big part of this defense. And th that's a guy that's going to have to step up this week. You know, not to say he had a bad week last week. I mean, you're going to be going up against the Indianapolis Colts offensive line. You're going to struggle regardless. And now you're going to be going up against Tennessee. And Tennessee has a good offensive line as well. Um, Taylor Lewan, I believe, is either injured. You know, he's a little banged up or he's not playing. Um, I'm not 100% sure. But, you know, you're going to be going up against a really solid offensive line this week again. So this pass rush is something that, you know, I'm hoping develops this week. You know, I'm hoping some sacks come out of it. One thing that, you know, I hope continues to be dominant is this defensive line against the run game because that is the number one key to being the Tennessee Titans, especially if this defense plays the way they played last week. Phillip Rivers still threw 363 yards, but this quarterback that we're playing against this week, it's not Phillip Rivers. This quarterback is Ryan Tannehill. I love Ryan Tannehill. I hate the Titans. You know, it's hard for me. It's not hard for me to root against the Titans. But if there are two players for me that made it hard for me to root against the Titans, it'd be Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill. Because I got a lot of love for both those guys. And I know a lot of Jags fans, you know, kind of have a lot of love for Derrick Henry as well. Because he grew up in the Jacksonville area. So, you know, I got a lot of love for him. I hope they succeed. I wish they played for different teams. But Ryan Tannehill... I think he's going to struggle to be thrown against this defense. And it's really exciting, too, because Jared Wilson, you know, it's not, excited that J it's not exciting Jared Wilson's on the IR. But with him going to the IR, now Andrew Wingard, who got that interception last week, 
now fills in as a starting safety. So this is going to be really, really interesting to see how this kid does as a full-time safety. You pair him and Josh Jones. You know, this the safety position in Jacksonville seems like, you know, it's ever-changing all the time. And, you know, how crazy would it be if Andrew Wingard and Josh Jones were the two safeties to finally just solidify in Jacksonville? Both of them looked good. Josh Jones was all over the field in week one. And, you know, they're going to have to read Ryan Tannehill's eyes, make sure that, you know, he can't make any throws. C.J. Henderson, too. There's some doubts that A.J. Brown's going to play this week. So you lock, C.J. Henderson is going to lock down whoever that number one receiver is going to be in Tennessee. Trey Herndon's going to play well. I really like our pass defense against Ryan Tannehill. You make Ryan Tannehill throw this ball, the offense is going to take care of the rest. I'm not worried about the offense going up against this Tennessee defense. I mean, maybe I should be a little bit more worried, but there's nothing on Tennessee's defense right now that is just going to blow me away to where I don't think Gardner Minshew can handle it and where I don't think, you know, Jay Gruden has seen some things. You know, they obviously blitz a lot. You know, the blitz packages are going to be something that you got to look for in Tennessee, and obviously, you know, Doug Marone knows that. And, you know, Jay Gruden said in his presser this week, you know, he only got one hour of sleep the night prior looking at all those blitz packages. And something that you love about Jay Gruden, he's putting in new plays as the week goes on. You know, it, other Jacksonville offensive coordinators, you could have swore they had the same three plays week in and week out. Didn't matter if they worked. Didn't matter if they didn't. They just ran the same three plays. And you know he's just going to use it to counteract that blitz and to really build the Gardner Minshew's strengths. So I really think this offense is going to play really well against Tennessee's defense. It really comes down to how well can this team stop Derrick Henry? Because if you're forcing Ryan Tannehill to throw the ball, it's lights out, baby. And I think that's any any team can beat Tennessee that way. It, it reminds me a lot of the 2017 Jaguars. I mean, Leonard Fournette, obviously, you know, Jags cut him, but he had a fantastic 2017 season. <clears throat> and Bortles stepped up and got that contract extension. And then you had Bortles and Fournette in the backfield, and that was that was how you stopped the Jaguars. You made Bortles throw the ball, that was it. You know, you couldn't really do much. So if we make Tannehill throw the ball, you limit Derrick Henry, even if he gets 100 yards, you limit Derrick Henry to not any big blockbuster 99-yard runs that aren't going to be played for years and years to come. I mean, this is going to be a game that the Jacksonville Jaguars should dominate. Not just win, but dominate. I think the Jaguars win this game, and I think they win by a considerable margin. I don't think this is going to be as close as the Colts game. I think the Jaguars win this one 21-10. I think Tannehill, I mean, I think Gardner Minshew throws two touchdowns. James Robinson gets his first NFL rushing touchdown. And then that's a big momentum swing heading into the Thursday night game against Miami. And it's going to just, it's all going to build together. And then everything's going to really kind of come to a head when they, you know, get to that later part of their schedule where they really face those powerhouse teams. And, you know, come that point in the schedule, who would have thought, maybe we're talking about Jacksonville going to the playoffs. Maybe we're just reading too much in to week one. Maybe the Titans are going to bring us back to reality, but I really don't think so. I have a lot of confidence in this offense. I think the Titans are too one-dimensional. You've seen it on Monday night. Ryan Tannehill wasn't electric throwing the ball. They stopped Derrick Henry. You know, he had 31 carries for 116 yards. He wasn't explosive. And, I mean, Drew Locke just couldn't get the job done, unfortunately. But Gardner Minshew's no Drew Locke. And all you Broncos fans out there that wanted to make the argument that Drew Locke was better than Gardner Minshew... Shut your mouth, and you're going to get proven wrong this week when Gardner Minshew smacks the Tennessee Titans and the Jacksonville Jaguars get the victory over the Titans and move on to 2-0. And, oh. and they're going to face Miami, and then they're going to be 3-0. And, oh. and it's going to be very interesting to see where the Jaguars go from there. And that was my week number two preview between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tennessee Titans. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook 
at Dream Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Dream Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new chan- new videos on this channel three days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.